Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be discussing about the third segment of Module 3, Mathematical Pendulum. The outline for today's video are, first, we're going to discuss about the purpose of this module, second, about the brief theory, third, the data processing section, and fourth, the report format. The purposes of this module are, First, to determine the value of experimental gravitational acceleration, symbolized by G, using the principle of simple pendulum oscillation. The second is to compare the values of experimental period, symbolized by T0, with the theoretical period, symbolized by T. As we know, a pendulum system is a mechanical system that consists of a certain load with a certain shape, tied to a certain fulcrum with a string or a rope. This pendulum system moves periodically. To put it simply, this periodic movement can be categorized as a simple harmonic motion. In simple pendulums, or mathematical pendulums, the load is assumed as a point object, and the mass of the string is neglected. Meanwhile, in physics pendulum, the mass of the string is calculated, and there is also a contribution from the moment of inertia of the load. This pendulum system can oscillate through its point of equilibrium due to the availability of restoring force. We know from the second law of Newton that force equals to mass times acceleration. In this pendulum system, we have minus mass times gravitation times the sine of theta that equals to the mass times the second derivative of S per T, otherwise known as acceleration. In this system, we can denote this as mass times the length of the string times the second derivative of theta over t. For a small theta, sine theta can be approximated by theta. By crossing out the mass from the left and right hand side of the equation as well, we now have minus g0 times theta divided by l that equals to the second derivative of theta over t, otherwise known as angular acceleration. With the availability of theta on the left side, we can now translate this into omega zero, which represents the angular velocity that equals to the square root of g zero divided by L. Note that zero on g zero and omega zero here represents the fact that sine theta is equal to theta. We know that angular velocity can also be represented by two pi per t zero or two pi per period. So now we have the equation below, 2 pi per t0 equals to square root of g0 per l. Move the variables here and there, and we now have t0 equals to 2 pi times the square root of l per g0. However, in this practicum, or in this module, we collect the data of period. But this equation only applies for a small theta. What if the theta is big? There is a certain phenomenon that can happen to this pendulum system when the theta is bigger. This will make sine theta not equal to theta anymore, and the oscillation of the pendulum will experience dampening. It is the process where the pendulum will swing slower and slower over time. Due to this, a correction is needed to the period calculated by using the Taylor series. Period T can be specified with an expansion up to the third order by the equation shown below. T, the theoretical period, equals to T0 multiplied by the correcting factor between the brackets, 1 plus 1 divided by 4 multiplied by sine to the power of 2 of half of the theta max or theta, plus 9 divided by 64 multiplied by sine to the power of 4 of half of theta max or theta. Based on the explanation before, we can substitute t0 by 2 pi multiplied by the square root of l per g. Next is the data processing section. We are going to begin with the experiment number one, determining the value of gravitational acceleration. Here we have the mass of the string, the length, and the mu of the string. These data is only to show that the mass of the string may be neglected. Next, we are going to collect the data of period for the variations specified in the table below. The pendulum periods are varied by mass and the length of the rope. Here we can see we are setting a constant theta 
of 5 degrees. And we're going to use two mass variations of 30 and 243 grams. However, in your experiment, you don't have to calculate the mass of your things. And then we're going to vary each mass by three lengths of rope or string, 25, 50, and 75 centimeters. For convenience, we're going to find the square root of the length of the string. And then we're going to find the T0, which is the one that you collect or you count using the stopwatch. Next, we're going to use those data to plot two different graphs for each mass variations. Here we have the graph of period T0 over the square root of the length of the rope with a mass of 30 grams. The square root of L will act as the X axis and the T0 will act as the Y axis. Hence, we have three points here. We are going to do the same thing with the mass variation of 243 grams as shown in the slide here. We can represent the graphs plotted before as a linear regression equation shown above, y equals to ax plus b. Now, based on the equation I explained before, t0 equals to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of l per g, we can now substitute them to this linear equation. How? We can set y as t0, x as the square root of l, and a, or the gradient of the linear equation, as 2 pi per square root of g. By using this equation and acquiring y and x, and then acquiring a, based on the graphs before, we can acquire the gravitational acceleration for each graph, or for each mass variation, as shown on the table below. After acquiring the gravitational acceleration for each mass variation from the experiment before, we are going to move to experiment number two, determining the theoretical period of the pendulum with a high angle of deviation. Now we are going to use this equation stated before, where there will be a correcting factor for the period. One thing to note is that here we are going to say that t equals to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of L per G, where G is represented by the G we found before on experiment number one. Now here we can see the main table that will be filled out in experiment number two. We have the mass variations, and for each mass variation, we have three variation of lengths, and for each mass and length variation, we're going to have four different thetas. Now, we can see the column T0 and T theory. T0 will be the ones that you collected with the stopwatch, where you did it in your own homes. And T theory will be the one that you calculated based on the explanation I shown you before, on the slide before this slide. After acquiring T0 and T theory, you can now count the error by finding the absolute value or the absolute difference between T0 and T theory. And that concludes our data processing section. Okay, that is all I can give. I hope that this video can give you insights on how mathematical pendulums work. And good luck to all of you. Thank you for watching.